Support for President Joe Biden among black and Hispanic voters continues to drop and drop and drop. In the New York Times Siena College national polls over the past year, Biden's approval rating stands at 47 percent among non-white voters. While he won more than 70 percent of non-white voters back in 2020, since 2020, his support among black voters has declined from about 90 percent to the 80s and from the 70s down to the 60s among Hispanic voters. In a compilation of the New York Times Siena College polls from 2022 and 2023, Biden leads Donald Trump by just 53 percent to 28 percent among registered non-white voters. Biden previewed a potential 2024 pitch to young black voters during the commencement speech he gave at Howard University this spring. Let's watch. That fearless pro progress toward justice often meets ferocious pushback from the oldest and most sinister of forces. That's because hate never goes away. It only hides under the rocks. And when it's given oxygen, it comes out from under that rock. And that's why we know this truth as well. Silence is complicity. It cannot remain silent. We have to live through this battle for the soul of the nation. While there were applauds to that speech, many students also stood up in protest. Joining us now to tell us a little bit more about what this could all mean heading into 2024 is policy director for the Libra Initiative, Isabel Soto. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. So I want to get into this a little bit. While uh, you know non-white voters are you know treated as a monolith, they're not a monolith. But a lot of folks saw, you know, non-white voters, Hispanic voters, black voters as uh, a group of voters that helped deliver 2020 for Joe Biden. There were a lot of promises made on the racial justice front that Biden has received criticism for not delivering on. Do we think that a lot of his voter base from 2020 is slipping and can't be counted on going into 2024? Yeah, so I think it's it's interesting to look at the political landscape now because it, it has changed even since you know the, the the Senate elections that we saw. Hispanics are fed up with seeing Biden's policies continue to fail, and him getting up and giving speeches saying everything is working is just not going to cut it. Um, so what we are seeing is a shift to the right or just more open mindedness about Republican candidates, and we'll see that going into the election, and I'm sure that will play itself out. Um, in part during the primary and as well uh, during the presidential. What do you think Republicans are doing specifically to, I mean, is it actually a matter of, of Republicans winning over some of these voters or just, you know, they're not enthusiastic with Biden anymore, so maybe they're not going to show up and maybe they're not going to vote, but are they really, you know, endorsing um, Republican policies or Republican personalities? So I, I'd say it's a little bit of, of both. Outreach matters, right? So there's there's poll data to show that about 60% of Hispanics felt that neither party tried to make an effort to reach out to the community over the last two election cycles. That's pretty significant when you're talking about the, the whole community itself. So part of it is the Biden policies are failing. Uh, Libra actually, actually conducted a poll with public opinion strategies that found that the most important issue to Hispanics is the economy. If we're looking at where the economy's at, people are dissatisfied. So it's Biden failing, in addition to having Republicans come forward, connect with the community and say, we do have solutions and we care about this. Do you find that when you're polling around issues or inquiring around well, which policy issues are most important among leaders of different caucuses, that there are specific policies that they are looking for, or are they looking at the general state of the economy and, and judging the leader based off of that? Yeah, so based on our specific polling, we, we saw the economy writ large and jobs that pulled about second in lists of priorities. The number one issue more specifically within the economy is inflation. People are still concerned about inflation. It's still relatively high. Just because it's less bad from a 40-year high does not mean that things are uh, stable or the prices are stable. And Hispanics in particular, Black voters as well, uh, feel it more in their pocketbook than other voters do. They spend more money on essentials, food, travel that we see these, these uh, volatile prices. So right now, the big issue for this community is inflation. 
Also, a new public opinion uh, strategies uh, poll uh, shows that national a survey of Hispanic voters finds 71 percent think the country is on the wrong track. And it's clear that Bidenomics might not be working for Hispanic voters because only 21 percent say the economy is excellent, while 31 percent say it's fair and 48 percent see it as poor. Additionally, inflation does remain the top issue for Hispanic voters, um, the survey finds. You know, I think the, the Republican Party, um, you know, if you go back to, uh, to what, to 2012, to the, uh, the Romney loss, there was some self-reflection on, uh, you know, what can we do to reach out to Hispanic voters, black voters. There was, you know, that whole internal document that, well, maybe we have to moderate on on our on our immigration policies. Then Trump came along, did the opposite of that, and actually won. Now I think he's sort of he's then he subsequently lost, and he lost a lot of midterm elections. And you know, the political genius of Donald Trump is, I think, much more in question today than it was in 2016. But some, so many Republican leaders, I, I think, gave up on the idea of getting Hispanics to vote for them. Um, do you think that's changing at all? Are they, you know, they, are they, as GOP leaders, are they heartened by these poll results, uh, poll results rather, that show that Hispanic voters are not happy with Bidenomics? They're really upset about inflation, you know, that, you know, that they would be winnable for Republicans with just like a little bit less harsh messaging on immigration, which is not to say that they're even necessarily, I mean, that they're like pro illegal immigration or something like that. I think the, the immigration question is always an interesting one, because if we do look at the polling, that immigration generally ranks pretty low in terms of priorities for Hispanics. It's not like it doesn't even cut the top three, typically doesn't make the top five either. Um, and especially if we're talking specifically border security, right? Let's talk illegal immigration. Let's think about like which communities the individuals that are illegally crossing are going into. These are predominantly Hispanic communities that people are entering. So concerns about illegal immigration hit very close to home to a large percentage of the Hispanic electorate. So I, I think I would say it's it's actually a little bit confusing that Republicans would feel like they might lose Hispanics on this issue. Now, when it comes to the kind of employment visa, immigration reform, that's a little trickier. Um, but when it comes to legal immigration, it's not that far out of line of where the majority of, of the rest of the U.S. is is there's concern here with people crossing into the country illegally in large numbers. Watching different administrations come in and out and make policy promises on the campaign trail and then get into office and take things in a different direction or just not make good on their promises, do you find that it's a, a major problem? I, I think I've observed, it, observed this working on campaigns and then looking at administrations where it seems that there's a greater focus on the messaging around a policy than the results of the policy being achieved themselves. Do you find that it, it seems Democrats definitely are hamstrung by this idea of, well, if we take this approach, we're gonna be criticized by the right in X, Y, or Z way, and therefore we need to change our policy approach and maybe compromise a needed result of job growth or, or reducing inflation. It seems to me that uh, the messaging has become more of a focus than actually achieving the intended results. Do you identify this as a problem as well? Do you think that's a fair assessment? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's part of the issue, the why we're seeing some of these minority voters start to open to other other possibilities and other candidates, because we have this whole PR campaign around binomics. And at the end of the day, people are looking at their spending and they're seeing they're spending hundreds of dollars more like right now than they would have two years ago. And it's just not ringing true as much as the messaging is being pushed and as much as Biden wants to say that his plan is working. People can see it when they go to the gas station and they see it when they go to the grocery store. Isabel Soto, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.